Hello class, this will be the final review of the, the, of the year. Uh, I'm going to go over each and every single of the questions that I posted for you guys for the final review packet. Um, remember that the finals is tomorrow on June 2nd. It will start at 9 a.m. and then it will end at 12 p.m. You may um, come in at any time between those two times as long as you finish by 12 p.m. Uh, it will be on Pearson. There will be 30 questions in total. Um, there's some of the questions are multiple choice. Some of them are like checking the boxes. You guys know the drill. You guys know how um, Pearson works. Um, that will be the final test grade for the year. Starting from June 3rd to June 5th, we're going to be starting to finalize the grades. Um, most likely what I need to do is I need to go through every single final test and um, because it's Pearson they graded for you guys online but there you guys know that there might be some typos um, I'm gonna have to go through those and make sure that everything is okay there's that there's no typos and things like that and then I'll put in the grades for you guys right away because that will be a simple transition because Pearson already graded it for me okay so good luck for you guys good luck to you guys tomorrow um, Let's it, everyone should be getting 100 because it should not be that difficult. All right, so question number one. And find the missing links using the law of sines. Now, law of sines indicates that sine of angle A over the side length A is equal to sine of angle B over B, sine of angle C is over C. So I want to look for this X guy here, and you have to pretty much look at the angle that is opposite to which is 61. Now the only side length that's given to me is 21 centimeters and that's the angle that's opposite from the side length of 21. So I'm actually going to have to find what this angle is going to be. Uh, 48 and 61, when you add them up you get 129. So if you subtract that from 180 because you know three angles in a triangle adds to give you 180, that should be 51 degrees. And then so that's 51 degrees here, and that is the angle that is opposite to side length of 21. So your setup for the first question should be as follows. Sine of 61 over x is equal to sine of 51 over 21. And then how do we solve questions like these? Well, you just have to simply cross multiply them, right? So sine of 51 times x is equal to 21 times sine of 61. So when you type in sine of 61 into the calculator and multiply by 21, and you divide that by sine of 51, you should get the final answer to be x is equal to 23.63. Okay. Well, when they ask you to round to the nearest hundredth or the tenth place, your answer should just be 23.6 or 23.63 based on what decimal point that they want you to be at. Okay. All right, so you're going to be doing the same thing for these two questions. Um, so this one would be uh, 57. This one here, if you add them up, I get 170, so that should be 10 degrees. And uh, sine of third, sine of 10 over x is equal to sine of 52 over 45. And so, if I do it accordingly. Uh, X here should be 9.916 for the second one. And then for the third one, it says that um, sine of 57 over X is equal to sine of 88 over 44. So sine of 57 times 44, you cross multiply these two, divided by sine of 88, you should get the X to be 36.92 millimeters, meters, and then centimeters if just to indicate the units themselves also. Okay, so that's that. Um, so let's move on to the second question. All right, fill in the table below. Now I have asked you many, many times how to fill this up um, during the class. I asked you at least twice, that, that I know for sure. The answer should be 1 half. But that makes cosine of 60 to be 1 half, remember, because these two are the sine and cosine of complementary angles, 30 and 60. If sine of 60 is root 3 over 2, that makes cosine of 30 to be root 3 over 2. Okay, And sine and cosine of 45 is just root 2 over 2, and the same thing, root 2 over 2, so that makes tangent to be 1.
Okay. Now for tangent for 30 degrees, it should be opposite over adjacent, which is one over square root of three, but you have to rationalize that. So make sure you know that's net root three over three. And for 60, it's going to be the same thing, but you have to reciprocate it, but that just simply makes it square root of three. Remember, these two are reciprocated. Okay, that should be the answer. Number three, trigonometry. This should be pretty simple. Sine of A, cosine of B, tangent of B, all that good stuff. So sine of A should be seven over 25. Sine of B should be 24 over 25. Cosine of B should be the same as sine of A. We know that, 7 over 25, because angle B, adjacent of hypotenuse. Tan cosine of A should be the same as sine of B, so that it should be 24 over 25. Now, tangent of A is 7 over 24. Tangent of B is the reciprocal of this, so it's 24 over 7. Okay. Tangent of A, 9 over 12, reduce it, 3 over 4. Okay. And then tangent of B here would be 12 over 9, which is going to be um, 4 over 3. Sine of A would be 9 over 15, reduce that to 3 fifths. Cosine of A should be 12 over 15, which should be 4 over 5. Sine of B should be 12 over 15, which should be um, 4 over 5. Same thing as cosine of A, pretty, sure, pretty much. Cosine of B should be same as sine of A, so it's 3 fifths. All right, that should be number 3. Well, the following lines, right triangle or not, how do you know? Well, if it's a right triangle, then you should know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared has to check out. So remember, the C has to be the longest length. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do 9 squared plus 12 squared equals 15 squared and see if that actually does make sense. Same thing here. I'm going to do 6.5 squared plus 8.5 squared equals 13.5 squared. If they do equal each other, that's not 18 by 11, it's 15. If they do equal one another, then I know for a fact that I have the um, Pythagorean theorem checks out, which is a right triangle. So that's 81 plus 144 equals 225. And yes, that does check out. So yes, you would write that one for this one. And 6.5 squared plus 8.5 squared is equal to 114.5. Does that equal 13.5 squared? Absolutely not, because it's 182.25. So that's a no. So when you say, how do you know, you're just going to say, oh, because of the Pythagorean theorem. All right, next one. So tangent line to a circle. Okay, so there are two things that I asked you guys to remember about tangent line to a circle is that the line, tangent line to the radius, it always creates this 90 degrees, which makes it a right triangle. So it kind of goes back and forth from number four because of the Pythagorean theorem. And another thing is, is that, well, the tangent lines, um, I think there's a lot of more components to it, but when ta two tangent lines meet up, then those two are equal to each other. But that's not really necessary to solve for these two questions. I want to know AB. That's a radius, guys. So then that should be four. The angle that AB forms with BC is always going to be 90 degrees because that's the property. And we want to know what fine, uh, AC is. So if you think about this right triangle that you see right here, and if I were to redraw that, the height is four, this length is nine, and I just want to know what the hypotenuse is. So the hypotenuse here will be x squared equals nine squared plus four squared. So it would be 81 plus 16, and then you have to square root that. And so BC would be 9.84, rounded to the nearest tenth or a hundredth, whatever that may be. Or 9.85 if you're out to round it up. Okay, but you get the idea. All right, so for the next one, you have letters instead of numbers. So it makes it a little bit more complicated to do, but find X, it says. Okay, well, we know that this is tangent line. That's right, right triangle. So here, what's the length of the hypotenuse? It should be 8 plus x. So you have x squared plus 12 squared is equal to 8 plus x squared. That should be the formula. So x squared plus 144 is equal to, guys, you have to foil this. Do not say it's 64 plus x squared. So it's 64 plus 16x plus x squared once you foil it. The x squareds both cancel each other out. I hope you remember from the class um, when we had it. Subtract 64 from both sides, and what do you get is 80 is equal to 16x. x should be 5 from that point onwards. Okay, so next question. Arc measure. So the, ang the arc measure is indicated by minor arc, arc of SUT. That's a measurement of arc SUT, which is this thing right here. 
Well, if you know that this is 80, it's pretty much 360 minus 80 because central angles is the same as the arc measure. So that's 80, and so the rest of it should be what's indicated for you in red. That's 360 minus 80, which should give you 280 degrees, so it should be B. The angle LHJ, this angle of two angle right here, that's the angle that we're talking about. This is 50 degrees. This is 50 degrees in arc measure, and this is 157 degrees in arc measure because we know central angle and the arc measure is going to be the same. So that means this central angle and this arc measure is going to be the same. So if that's 50 and that's 157, what the question is asking you to solve for is pretty much the rest of it, LHJ. Well, remember, if you find the arc measure, that will be the same as the degree measure, the central angle measure. All I got to do then, 360 minus 157, which is this one, get that out of the way, and get this out of the way, minus 50. So it's pretty much the same thing as saying 360 minus 207, so I get 153 degrees as my answer, so it should be C. All right, moving on, number seven. Find the shaded area, arc length and sector area. I hope you guys remember the formulas here. Arc length and sector area always follows the same formula in the beginning portion. Theta over 360, theta over 360. It's the proportion of the corresponding um, designated property that we're solving for. Arc length is the length outside the circle, which means we're talking about proportions of the circumference sector area proportions of the area so those are the formulas so i want to find out the sector area which states that theta over 360 times pi r squared we're going to plug in 40 for my central angle 40 divided by 360 pi times 18 squared i know that 18 is really hard to see but that indicate just know that all of these values are going to be your um, radius so that's going to be the um the answer here. So my final answer, if you remember, I always ask you to leave this in terms of pi. So this turns out to be 1 over 9. So 18 squared divided by 9 gives you 36. Okay, so therefore, um, it's going to be 36 pi for my final answer. Or if you want it to be a little bit more specific, it will be m square, um, square meters. For this one, it will be theta over length of the arc x, y, which is this one, minor arc, theta over 360 times 2 pi r, because we're talking about the circumference. And then we're going to plug in 70 for my central angle, 2 pi times 10. And so what you're going to get is 70 times 20 divided by 360. And what I get is, uh, if I put that in a fraction, I get 35 over 9 pi. That's going to be my final answer. Or if you'd like to do it in decimal, it will be 3.89 pi. Either one should be fine. Number eight. So this one is going to be a little bit more complicated than the other ones because we talked about it, but I told you that once we, after we talk about it in the quiz, you guys are most likely going to forget it because it's really not that significant. So Valvin in the letters below. It says the letter H is the geometric mean between blank and blank. I gave you, to, gave you this on the test as well. It's between X and Y. Why? Because I told you. Because it's all coming from a similar triangles. We have three similar triangles here. Number one, number two, and the big one, number three. Okay? If you set up the ratios with its altitude and the base, you will get that this height, if you cross, if you set up the ratio like h over y equals, you know, x over h like this, that will be proportional. And then you have to cross multiply a squared is xy, h squared is squared of xy. So that's what it means to be geometric mean. A times B square rooted, that's what it means to be um, geometric mean between A and B. But that's a scratch, that's just a side note. Letter A here, well that has to deal with Z, but because we're talking about the left half, we're going to be using X. Letter B is we're using the right hand side, we're still going to be using Z, but you're going to be using Y instead. Okay? All right, so find the QA by setting the ratio. Okay, so find the QAH here. Well, to find that out, we have to say that it's h over 8 is equal to 2 over h. Or you can say that h is equal to square root of 8 times 2, which should be 4. Maybe I should not have said the ratio part, because all you got to do is just follow a, b, and c. 
you just have to find the geometric mean. Find QP by saying the ratio. Okay, QP is the letter A portion. And to get that, I need to use X and Z. That's your X, that's your Z. Z is 10. So it's the square root of 20, that's my final answer, or 2 square root of 5. This part right here, find QR, that's B, and it says to use 8 and 10, so it's square root of 80, so that should be 4 square root of 5. That should be my answers right there. The exact same questions for the quiz, by the way, or quiz review. All right, number nine. Suppose that the line DC and AB are parallel. So I, I know that that's not indicated, but I'm going to indicate that those are parallel. Which two triangles are congruent by what postulate? Well, obviously, there's only two triangles. So triangle, let's say, BAD is congruent to triangle DCB. By what postulate it says? Well, we know that these two are the same. These two are the same because of a reflexive property. What else? Obviously, this one. Why? Because they are interior alternate. So what I have is SAS, SAS postulate. We go way back. We learned this in October, November-ish. Name all pairs of corresponding angles and, uh, and sides of the cor uh, congruent triangles. Okay, well, first of all, we know that side CD is congruent to side AB because we go from CD and then we have to go from AB. Then we can say BC, going from B to C, is congruent to side length DA. The last one is, this is another side length here, I'm going to use sky blue. Uh, DB is congruent to side length BD. Remember, because we need to start from the corresponding um, angles. Okay, so now let's talk about the angles now. Angles, there's going to be three of them, right? So angle CDB is congruent to angle, what is that, ABD, then another one, this angle and this angle, angle DAB, that is equal to the angle BDC, a uh, BCD, I mean, and the last one, this one right here, we can say that it's angle ADB is congruent to angle CBD. I'm sorry, there should be one angle that we're missing. No, do we have everything? A, B, D, C, B, D. All right, so it seems like we have everything. Okay, of course, it might not be strictly be in that order, but you guys get the idea. So the one that uses C is this one, this one, this one. So those are the three angles of the upper half triangle, and this one, this one, this one is the lower half triangle, okay? All the corresponding angles and sides are congruent, so they're all going to be the same. Due to what? C, P, C, T, C, please. Fill in the blanks. All right, number 10. Find the missing angle. What do we call these two pairs? Vertical angle. And why do we care about that? It's because they make, they're equal to each other. What that means is I can figure what this out by using 20 and 40, subtracted from 180, and get you 120. That makes this also 120. 39 plus 120 plus question mark gives you 180 because that's another triangle in itself. So 180 minus 159 should give you 21. That's my final answer. Degrees. This one is the third angle of this triangle. Have to subtract that from 180. And then get 55. 55 plus 50 gives you 105, and the rest of it should be 75 degrees. 75 plus 35 should give you 100. Oh, I'm sorry. 75 plus 35 should give you 110. So the rest of it should be 70 degrees. So it's like pretty much like a domino effect where I find one and then I use that information to get the next and get the next and get the next. Okay, so here we have two triangles that we classify as equilateral, and we call this isos isosceles triangle. Now, what's important about that? Equilateral, you know it's all going to be 60s. Isosceles triangle, it means that these two angles are going to be the same. Have to remember that the base angle is going to be the same. So if that's 50, these two have to add to give you 130, but it's split exactly in half between the two, so it's going to be 65 and 65. Pretty much... It looks very similar to this triangle it's here, but obviously we don't have equilateral and isosceles from the first one. Find the following. I want you to find ABC. Already found, 60. 
DCE 65. DEF, DEF is this one. So you have to do 180 minus 65 because those are supplementary. So that's going to be 115 degrees. GAH, that's a vertical angle from this angle, so that should be 60 degrees. Okay, next. Tangent lines to a chord. Remember, the magic number is always 1 over 2, okay, to go from smaller to bigger one. So if we know that this is a chord and this is a tangent line and they create 76 degrees. Now remember, tangent lines to a radius creates 90. This is not a radius. That's a chord. So it doesn't, it could be anything. So the angle here is 76. So I want you, I want you guys to find what this is going to be. What is the arc measurement of GF, the major one? So how do we do that? Well, first of all, I need to find out what this is. And what's the relationship? The angle that it creates, the inscribed angle with the tangent and the chord, is always half of this, whatever this is. So if x over 2 is equal to 76 degrees, then x is simply just doubling what 76 is, which is 152 degrees. So from here to here, that's 152 degrees. And with this and this, they create one full circle. So the question mark is 360 minus 152, which makes it 208 degrees. That's going to be your arc measure. Same thing here. Oh, this is even easier because all you got to do is just cut this in half, get 73 degrees. That was a no-brainer. Next. Okay, so another tangent lines, find each measure. So KJM is the first one right here. That's what I want to find first. I'm given this as 126. I'm given this as 96 because remember, um, central angle to the arc measure is always going to be the same. That really leaves you with the rest of it, MLJ. Well, how do I get that? 96 plus 126 should give you 222 degrees. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, that's 120, 222. 360 minus 222 should give you 138 degrees right here. So that means to find out the inscribed angle, all I got to do is cut this in half to get this angle inside, which should end up being 69 degrees right there. Okay, so MJN, which is this one, to get that, it's going to be a little bit tricky, but if you remember, 96 degrees, this angle, that's the inscribed angle, to this, so all I gotta do is cut it in half, right? So it's 40, um, that divided by two should be 48. And then HJN, which is this one right here, well, all of these three combined, these three combined should give you 180 degrees because that those three create this supplementary angle because it's all on one singular line. They're collinear, for example. So it's 69 plus 48, and you have to do 180 minus that, which is 63 degrees. Okay, And also it checks out because notice how this angle right here is 126, and the inscribed angle here should be half of 126, which is 63 as well. So either way, it works out perfectly. Next, secant area and reverse arc length and sector area. So find the area of the shaded region. What I need to do is I first need to find out this pizza slice, which we call the arc sector area, or we just call it the sector area. Sector area, remember, is theta over 360 times pi r squared. And then you need to subtract away the triangle area, which states that it's 1 half base times height. That area, I it's you guys learn it from elementary school so to get the area of the sector we plug in 90 because that's 90 degrees over 360 times pi times 10 squared which gives you um, let's see 90 times 100 divided by 360 so we get 25 pi that is the area of the sector now I need to subtract away the area of a triangle which states as one half base times height, which gives you 50. So I know that may look weird, but that's how you're going to just leave it. Find the area of the shaded region. Or if you actually calculated it and got 28.53, that also works out for me as well. 
Okay. Now the next one, find the measure of the central angle of a sector area is fifth, uh, 5 pi and the radius is 6. So I need to have a little bit of a visual because you guys already know that I'm a visual person. So if the sector area is 5 pi and the radius is 6, so the radius is 6 and this area here is 5 pi. What I really am concerned with is this theta that's the central angle of this um, question. So if I were to write down the formula, it's still theta over 360 times pi r squared, but that's equivalent to the sector area, which indicates that it's 5 pi. And then the radius is 6. So all I'm going to do is just plug it in. Theta over 360 times pi times 6 squared is equal to 5 pi, and then I'm going to solve. Okay, well, how do I solve that? Pi's on both sides will cancel each other out. 6 squared is 36. 36 divided by 360 should give you 10 on the bottom. So theta over 10 is equal to 5. Therefore, theta must be 50 degrees if you just solve it out. Okay, so just still you're using the central angle, the, you're using the sector area slash arc length formula for any of these questions to get the designated variable. All right, next. Area of triangle using sine. So this we haven't really talked about much in detail, but um, still I feel that one of the questions utilizes this, only one, and when that question appears, I just need you to be able to how to get the area itself. Uh, for these two questions that you see, it's going to be very simple. All you got to do is just plug it into the formula. So the first one says 9.9, .9, 72, and 15. So it's 1 half, 9.9, .9, 15, and then sine of 72. Now the reason why I can do that is because notice how I'm given two side lengths here and here, and the angle between those two sides are given to me, then it's pretty simple because it's kind of like an SAS situation. So like side, angle, side. You can use this formula anytime. Okay, and then you just have to plug it in. So my first answer would be 9.9 .9 times 15 times 0.5 times sine of 72 degrees, which should give you 70.615 square feet. The next one here is the same thing. Uh, 1 half times 8 times 11 times sine of 113. And so 88 divided by 2, 44 times sine of 113 should give you 40.502 square centimeters. And that should be the area of this triangle. Now for the next two triangles that I gave you, I didn't give you that. I gave you only one side length and two angles, and I didn't give you any um, the sides that's going to be, like two sides is going to be... Um, the what creates the between angle. So for example, for 83 degrees, I only gave you 7, but I didn't really give you this. So your job is to first go back to what we had done for the very first question and understand that, oh, this is a two-part system. You need to use law of signs, first of all, and then get that question mark, and then use the area of the form the formula for the area of a triangle using sine. That's why I asked you to use find AC by using the law of sines. Okay, so first this one ABC, the angle here would be uh, 75 degrees because 180 minus 83 minus uh, 22. And then I'm going to set up a sine ratio. So sine of 75 degrees over this question mark is equal to sine of 22 degrees over 7 because that's opposite. And then once I do that, so 7 times sine of 75, make sure you cross multiply, divided by sine of 22, I get 18.049. So I'm going to write that down. Okay. And then now I want to find out the area. Well, because I am given these two sides, and the angle right here in between. Now we're going back to the law of sines form, uh, the, the area of the triangle using sines, which states 1 half AB sine of C. A in this case and B in this case doesn't matter as long as the C is the angle in between. So I'm going to plug it in. 1 half 18.049 times uh, 7 times sine of 83 degrees, which, gives, which should give you my final answer. Times 7 times sine of 83 degrees. My final answer would be 62.702 square feet. 
Okay. All right. So doing it the same way, I'm going to find out what this is going to be. Find AC using law of sines. So that should be, well, I got to first find out what this angle is. So that should be 64 degrees when I add these two guys up. That should give you 116 degrees. Yep. All right. And then so law of sine. 32 is equal to sine of 35 over x. So sine of 35 times 32. And then you're going to divide that by sine of 116, which should get you 20.4211. That's going to be the length of this. And then I'm going to use the find the area. Well, that's the angle in between 420 and 32. Those are the only two side lengths that's tried to given. So you don't have to use this angle when you're using um, the area formula. So those two are the sides. One half 20.4211 times 32 times sine of 29 degrees. So that would be times 0.5 times 32 times sine of, okay, sine of 29. I believe that should be it. So that final answer will be 158.406 square foot. Just double checking. Yep, that should be it. Okay, so those are how to do the uh, area using the formula for sine. All right, miscellaneous. Um, this one is a centroid problem. What does what's a centroid? Well, first of all, centroid is created by connecting three what we call medians. A median is a line basically that connects from one line uh, segment, uh, one line segment of a side of a triangle to the opposite vertex of the triangle. But what it does is it cr it cuts it exactly into half. So that's a median. Another median will stem from this side. It will cut this in half, and then that will be another median. And then another median would connect from this side, cut this in half, and then connect it that way. So that is the median. What's the property? Well, it states that any medians cut, um, cut by this, it's what we call the centroid, it will always be two to one ratio. So take a look at NQ, for example, okay? Well, we know that NL from right here to here, from here to here would be eight. Well, then what is gonna be LQ? Well, there's gonna be always the longer length and the shorter length here. So here it will be always be half of the longer length, which means LQ would be four. That's how you're going to be solving uh, this question. Find RO, well RO is this one, this entire length right here. Um, let's see, I believe that the 10, oh, uh, this is not indicated for me, okay, so, Find N O. That should be twenty two because that should always also be eleven right there. Okay, and then um, this one right here should be four. I do not believe that the indication of this this ten should have been this one. I believe. I think that was a typo. I thought this was going to be M, not N L, but ten should have been R L instead. That's the intent of this problem. So L O would be doubled of 10 because 10 is obvious. You can see that's the shorter one compared to the longer one. So it should be 20. So R O should be 30. Okay, sorry if this 10 looked like it was M L. It really should not have been. If it was, then there's not enough information to solve for R O in the first place. Okay. All right, next. Uh, find the P triangle PQR is similar to X, Y, Z. Okay, so if it's similar, how do I do that? Well, you gotta have to set, to set up the ratio. Five to 30, well, that's the corresponding side, and the ratio is one to six. So that's multiplied by six, that's multiplied by six. Y, Z is 36, X, Z is 60. That was simple enough. Next, name the largest and the smallest angle in each of the triangle. That comes from the side length being the largest to smallest, but you just have to indicate what's going to be the opposite angle. So for example, 16 is the shortest length. Opposite angle to that is B. Angle B is shortest, or I'm sorry, smallest. 
and angle C, because it's opposite from 20, which is your longest length, that's going to be your largest. The triangle here, 17 is your sh uh, small, uh, shortest, so then angle X would be your smallest angle, and angle Y would be your largest angle, because it's opposite from 20, which is your sh longest length. Or the length of the triangle from shortest to longest of the following figure. That seems simple enough. FE will be the longest. So that should be at the end, right? Comma, comma. And then the shortest one will be GE, because that's opposite from 55. And the middle one should be GF. And that should be the order of shortest to longest. All right, next, find the x. What do we have here? We have exterior angles. And what do we know about exterior angles? Is that the sum of all of these angles combined should give you 360. And that's all you have to remember. So 75 plus 54 plus 76 plus x plus 65 plus 44 should give you 360. That's going to be a simple algebraic question. So 75 plus 54 plus 76 plus 65 plus 44. That's 314. So x should have been x should be 46 degrees when you subtract them. Last question. Okay, so reflection. Going all the way back to the second week of September when we started learning this. Graph each point, then reflect the point in the x-axis. Record the points of the reflection. You really don't have to show me the, um, the points. Only gave it to you because it, if it helps you. But remember, if I'm reflecting over the x-axis, what's really happening is that the x value stays the same, but the y value is really what's changing. So this one should be all of it should maintain its x, -ax, uh, x value. But the y value, you just have to switch the signs. Don't even have to plot it. Then the opposite thing happens on the second half where all the y's are preserved because think about it, if a point's right here, I'm reflecting it now over the y axis. That means that the y is preserved, but the x is the one that's being from negative to positive and vice versa. So three, negative two, five, and negative five, Negative 1, positive 2, positive 4, and negative 2. Those would be the answer for this one. If you're able to do all of this, um, you know, tomorrow by yourself, I don't think you're going to have any problem. Just study um, this materials. Um, all the topics that's covered for tomorrow should be within this review. Good luck to you guys. Make sure you get that last 100 before you end the marking period because with all the quiz grades, with this review and test grade, if they all turn out to be 100, I don't think that you guys will you know, miss getting an A for this class. Okay, I hope this video helped. I really had a wonderful time with you guys. Um, have a really, really good summer. I know that the last couple months has been very hectic because of this corona things, um, but it was all a new interesting experience for all of us, I hope. Stay safe out there and um, hope to see you guys again.